There comes a point in every man's life where he must be tested. Some climb mountains, some go to war, some raise families. Not I. The universe has laid a far greater burden on me. The universe has stolen my sock. My sock was special. One of a kind. Sorry. Two of a kind. That is rather the point of socks. It was pink. It had flamingos on it. I am not one who would claim a spiritual affinity with the flamingo, but they spoke to me in a way no sock or person has done before, or since. Now one of them is gone. It's a funny thing, having your sock stolen. You can hardly ring the police. Yes, officer. A treasured item of clothing has been nicked. You can't report it missing through the usual channels. Social services, posters and such like. People will look at you as a weirdo. Some square with an unhealthy attachment to his underwear. Every day, I go to the laundry. I see my sock in every spinning drum. I catch glimpses of its pattern in each piece of fabric. It follows me in my dreams, and in my waking. A single sock is among the most useless items on the planet. It languishes, unworn and unwearable. Matching the survivor to a partner would first require me losing another sock. An experience I do not feel currently emotionally equipped to deal with. And I cannot simply go without a sock on one foot. That way madness lies. And I am not mad. I did some online reading to help me cope. The five stages of grief are apparently well established and universally present. Denial didn't exactly last long. Anger was admittedly a bit of a low point, and bargaining seemed pretty pointless. I now reside in stage four, depression. I don't mean depression in the clinical sense. No, this feels less permanent. As the ancient Persians said, this too shall pass. Although, I doubt they were referring to socks. Would an ancient Persian even recognize a flamingo? I will make a note to research this. I can't buy a replacement, regardless of the obvious emotional attachment that simply won't be present in a new and fundamentally different pair of socks. The original pair were a present. I was given them sans label, as they say on the continent. I wouldn't know where to begin looking.
My friends and family have tried to help me through this troubled time. For my birthday, I received 46 pairs of socks. Stripes, spots, checks, argyle, block colours, reinforced heels, sheeps, bicycles, and Darth Vader. But not a flamingo in sight. The Greater Flamingo, Phenocopterus roseus, is native to parts of Africa, Southern Europe, and Southwest Asia. It is the world's most widespread flamingo. It is therefore not beyond the wit of man that an ancient Persian would recognize one. My socks, however, present an unusually northern colony of flamingos, on a latitude never before seen by science. I reach for T.S. Eliot. He does not help. Words move, music moves, only in time. But that which is only living can only die. My sock was not alive, neither has it died. It was a sock not a grandparent or a beloved pet. In ancient Rome, the tongue of a flamingo was considered a delicacy. The Moche people of Peru worshipped them. The flamingo is the national bird of the Bahamas. In 21st century Britain, we put them on socks. I reach for Tennyson. He does not help. As far as socks are concerned, is it truly better to have worn and lost than never to have worn at all? Such a statement seems trite. My socks deserve better. I suppose I must raise issues of personal responsibility. Is there anything I could have done to better protect my sock? Washing it in the communal laundry was a foolish risk in hindsight, a cavalier action for which I now pay the price. I reach for Thomas Gray. He seems to understand. I, fruitless, mourn to him that cannot hear, and weep the more because I weep in vain. I doubt he had the national bird of the Bahamas in mind when he penned these lines, but in them I find some comfort. My sock 
is gone. And never coming back. This is the fifth and final stage of grief. Acceptance. A simple acknowledgement that this is the way things must be. Neither the ancient Persians, nor Thomas Gray, nor the Mocha people of Peru can do anything about it. The universe rolls onwards, a trail of discarded socks in its wake. 